We got to go deeper. We got to go deeper, y'all. So let's try to figure out what's happening here and why. Why it's so easy for them to continue to finesse us. Let's figure out what happened. Let's really try to understand what she ran on so we can get a better understanding of how it is that we need to move for those of us that actually want to be informed voters. And I'm not telling you how you should vote. I'm telling you how I'm voting and why I'm voting the way that I'm voting. But I need you to be an informed voter to make a decision for yourself. Make sure y'all hit a like for the algorithm. Subscribe to the channel. Turn on your notifications. Uh, Tia Marie in the gray way. I'm definitely going to be reading that super chat shortly. Let's dig into it, y'all. I've been having a whole lot of MSNBC, CNN, and ABC on here. Let's get a little bit of Fox News to get their perspective alternatively than what it is that we've been seeing on the other outlets. And remember this. I don't necessarily take any of these outlets as serious as I take my own research. So we use this as a talking point in order to leapfrog into a bigger conversation. And then I'm going to give you my thoughts, all right? And we begin this Sunday morning with the Democrats' rebranding of Kamala Harris with just 100 days until Election Day. After nearly four years of policy failures from the Biden-Harris administration at the border, tax and spending leading to inflation, the media is now relaying the Democrat talking points that say Kamala was never in charge of the border after all. And no, she had no role in any economic policy. Well, in fact, the vice president was the deciding vote and the tiebreaker 33 times for Democrat policies. In let me, let me stop it right there. Kamala Harris cast 33 tie-breaking votes in the Senate, most by the vice, by vice president in U.S. history. Including the American Rescue Plan and the Inflation Reduction Act, which totaled $2.5 trillion and uh, sparked the inflation, part of the $7 trillion in spending, which at least in part led to sky-high inflation, currently up 20% on her. But we don't want to attribute that to Kamala Harris because, oh, no, 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 that's just Biden. Not the Biden administration, not Kamala Harris, not Kamala Harris's voting record in the Senate, not anything that she did as uh, the district attorney. None of that stuff matters. We don't care about the fact that she was the border czar. Immigration into this country didn't matter. Oh, no, no, no. They didn't actually give her the full title uh, on camera, even though it's actually in documents on the Congress's website. Oh, no, no. We, we can't attribute any of that to her. None of what actually is affecting you in your day. Look, look, look. When you get on TikTok and you sit on your phone and you say, Oh my God, I can't afford groceries. This is why I'm broke and I'm making $100 million a year. I don't want you to attribute any of that to anything that she had going on. I just want to make sure that y'all understand that this is the person that y'all want, okay? Watch. Despite not receiving a single vote in the year's Democrat primaries and dropping out of the 2020 Demo uh, Democrat race before they actually held their first primary, Harris now has enough support from delegates to become the party's nominee, according to the Associated Press. So let's go back to policy decisions and proclamations from the vice president during her term. I think there's no question that we've got to critically re-examine ICE and its role and the way that it is being administered and the work. You're talking about the very thing that Trump leapfrogged off of in order to do it more effectively than Obama, who was largely considered the border in chief. So you disagree with your contemporary that ultimately endorsed you into the United States of America. Okay. ...is doing, and we need to probably think about starting from scratch. I am running to declare once and for all that health care is a fundamental right. <laughs> and we will deliver that right with Medicare for all. We're not going to treat people who are undocumented across the border as criminals. That's criminal. We're not going to treat people who are undocumented crossing our borders as criminals. Let me ask y'all a question. If I trespass, I recently got banned from the casino at Greektown Casino. They now renamed it to Hollywood Casino in Detroit. Some of y'all are familiar with that because I actually did a video on it. And I was in there and I was making it rain. Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. They banned me online because I had made a whole bunch of money sports betting. And so they said, you can't even come in this mother effer. I said, I don't want to come here anyway. And then I looked behind me and I seen the state police and then I seen the cops. And then I looked to my left and I seen security. And I looked to my right and I seen the pit boss. I said, oh, shh. And me and Mika was like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. If I trespass against that property, 
Because they said, we have to officially let you know, Anton, that you are now trespassed against this property. If you do come in here again, we can arrest you. Listen, I live my life like an open book. I let you know the things that I'm successful at. I also let you know when I get kicked out of places, all right? I've been kicked out of better places, though. I've been kicked out of better places. So then when they kick me out, I said, well, you know what? I don't want to be here anyway. Mm, mm, mm. Mm? I've been kicked out of better places. This casino too smoky anyway. And all I see is degenerates in this mug. You know what I'm saying? Call up my NGM rep and say, listen, man, I want to go over there to Biloxi. Send me a plane ASAP. But if I walk into that place, I tell you what, the metal braces is going to be waiting for me. They got that facial recognition software. And they're going to go ahead and they're going to put me in the metal braces. They're going to say, listen, call your lawyer. First of all, you're going to spend some time in the weekend, over the weekend, with Big Bubba inside of this jail cell. But call your lawyer. He could probably get you out on Monday. I said, I don't want no police Johnsons next to me. It's cool to interview him, but it's not necessarily cool to sit in the cell with him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They won't have me in there with the hard criminals. But if you walk over here into a whole nother country, you could be a terrorist. You could just slap your baby mama. You could do anything. We don't know who you are. We don't know where you came from. We don't know why you're here. But if you walk over into a, you can walk into a whole nother country. I can't go over to Canada without having my passport nowadays. I know because Detroit is literally 15 to 20 minutes away from Canada. I can't walk over to Canada without a passport. They said no go. And you can't come back unless you got a passport to go along with it. So don't get your car stolen. And make sure you keep your keys next to you. But we don't treat people that walk into this country undocumented as criminals. Wow. And they proved it to you. Because this was back in 2019. So then what they did was, now they put them in sanctuary cities. And they right next to you in your neighborhoods. Over in Chicago... I see them protesting. Go and look it up. Over in Chicago, they're protesting today. Democratic National Convention is coming up very soon on August 19th. They're protesting today about a migrant shelter that they won't close because the community is being overran with criminals and all of the stats are pointing to the fact that they all coming out of one place, that migrant shelter that they got them housed in. That's giving them free health care. And then while their children is in school with your children studying and you paying the tax dollars for they over there, they're getting health care coverage, they're getting some free food, they're getting free shelter, and then they're going to break into your car and they're going to make sure that they deliver your DoorDash with that same car after you order your food when you get done with your police report. If I'm lying, I'm flying. If I'm lying, listen, you may vote for her because she's black, but I'm not voting for her because she overseen the thing that was the most meaningful to me over these last four years, and it's the fact that it's the migrant crisis. The migrant crisis. They was hiding them in Boston's airport. And in Atlanta, you had to go through a secret door. And in New York, they was over there taking your door dash and then stealing mopeds and motorcycles and they was committing crimes against people and they murdered a little white girl. I know y'all don't like white people. Y'all don't like white people. I love everybody. But they murdered a little white girl over there in what? Was it Tennessee or something like that? Arkansas? Correct. There's no question I'm in favor of banning fracking. We have confused the... For all the y'all that keeps saying, I don't like electric vehicles. The idea that to achieve safety, you put more cops on the street, instead of understanding to achieve safe and healthy communities, you put more resources into the public education system of those communities, into affordable housing, into home ownership. Mm. Well, that was then. Now it's uh, a, a presidential race. Well, let's go over these stats real quick, and then we're going to move over to the next section. Overall inflation since January 2020, 2021, which is when they were basically sworn into office, inflation is up 20%. This is not my opinion. This is a fact. Wages are down 2%. This is not my opinion. This is a fact. The national debt is at $35 trillion. Now, I'm not going to attribute that all to them because that also includes the previous administrations, including Trump. And this is I'm going to be fair. I'm going to be fair. I'm not going to spin a narrative. I'm going to actually tell you the truth. Some of this is from previous administrations and one of the administrations that contributed to national debt, which is why I have to take these sources 
with a grain of salt, do my own research and be able to correct it so I can give you all the correct context. You cannot at uh, attribute the entire national debt to Kamala Harris and the Biden administration alone. That is a cumulative, even though they significant, significantly contributed to it. You cannot say the entire thirty five trillion dollars is only on a watch. That's not true. You cannot just say that and leave that out there. You got to be able to add the context. OK, 10 million plus migrants. The real estimation is closer to 15 to 20 because those are only the ones that we can document and that we can track. We don't even know what happened to other ones. They said that there was planes that was flying over here with uh, undocumented migrants and they don't even know why it was authorized by the Biden administration in the first place. 10 million plus migrants illegally entered the United States of America that we know of. And two and a half of the years was during COVID. That's the wild part about it. Two and a half of the years was actually during COVID. It was during the time that they was trying to make y'all get the jab in order to even go over to New York. That's a fact. That's a fact. And they was just walking on over here. Y'all was protesting. Y'all was y'all was distracted, burning up auto zones, saying Black Lives Matters. 1.7 million known gotaways, gotaways at the southern border. And China has ramped up aggression against the U.S. I can continue. These are their talking points, but I can absolutely continue. Because on the ground, on the streets, it's way worse. Sanctuary cities are absolutely in shambles. Broken. Destroyed. Ultimately, some of the worst things that I've ever seen in my entire life. If y'all have not been over to Gary, Indiana, and that's not even a sanctuary city, but it's very, very, very close to Chicago. Very close to Chicago. If y'all ain't been over to the south, south side, south side of Chicago, y'all know what happened over there in Oakland? Oakland. Seminary. Shout out to my dog, Filthy Rich. Ah. Uh -huh. Seminary. Shout out to Mr. Fab, doing great things in the community. But guess what? They gave y'all Shane Tao, who was very much just a reflection of the mayors that was before him. They gave y'all Gavin Newsom. California is just in shambles. We ain't even gonna talk about California. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's bad out here in these streets. It's bad in here in these streets. So I just wanna let y'all know that y'all gotta be careful. Before.